Now I have those. Not yet. Is it on, huh? Okay, so today's lesson is how to locate resources. So that's, and I would like you to turn to page 15 in your packet. It's a blank piece of paper except for the title page in the corner and how to locate resources. Um, where is your packet, my friend? Oh, well, you know, what's, what, everybody, what's, what do you need to bring to class every day? This thing. Packet. Can you get a plain piece of paper so you can take notes and add it to your packet later? Oh, thank you. Then you get a plain piece of paper also. Are you the same? Yep. Whoa. You guys all forgot? Yep. <laughs> Um, if you're joining us, turn to page 15 in here. There's some spots over here next to your bud here. Okay, so everybody have it on page 15. So what's a resource when you're doing research? What's a resource when you're doing research? Yes, ma'am. Um, Google. What is Google? T tell me more. You can look up stuff to figure out. <laughs> yeah. What's the fancy word for Google? Wikipedia is a source on the internet. What is Google called? Yes. Okay, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Internet. Google is not the internet. Web. Not the web. Google. Google is not the only Search system. What was that? Search system, or it has another name that's called search engine. Google is a search engine. It searches everything. It's just like a giant index. There's Google, there's Yahoo, there's Bing. Internet Explorer. No, Internet Explorer is a browser. Yeah, it's a browser. What about Firefox? Firefox is a browser. What's a browser? It's a tool. On the web, on the to go on the internet, exactly, Ariana. I have another thing. <laughs> so, but none of those are actual resources for a research paper. You had your hand up for a resource. What is a resource? Say, um, the things you use to get your information. Oh, stop. Okay. What was that? The things you use to get your information from, like a book or something. So, on your resource pages, resource. Equals where, what if you get. When you take notes, you don't have to use complete sentences. In, and I'm even going to read you the info from. <laughs> Write that down on your paper right now, please. Resource equals where slash what you get info from. And filmmaker, you don't have to do that right now because it'd be hard to film and <coughs> take notes. I'll do it for If you have time, but I want you to do yours. If we have to, we can Xerox yours for her. Why don't we count on that <coughs> instead? Okay? We'll Xerox copy yours so that she has a set of it. Yes, sir? Um, an example of a resource um, be um, like Wikipedia. That is. that is, and we're going to talk about resources here. Now, would, if you were doing research on underwater life, would going to Nickelodeon no. and looking up Spongebob be a reliable resource? No. If you were talking about Why not? Cartoon, uh, <laughs> go ahead, tell me. If you were talking about cartoon sea animals, then yeah, because, well, Spongebob is cartoon sea animals. So you have to know your... You have to know your question, yeah. what it is that you're actually looking. That helps you evaluate the reliability of your resources. Do you have a question? If it said, like, what's the animal is a cartoon? <gasps> yeah, if that was your question, what, what, cartoon, what sea animals are also cartoons, then looking up at Nickelodeon. Thank you for getting that door. Um, yes, sir. Well, <laughs> I know if you're looking for hockey, could go to NHL.com. And why would that be a reliable resource? Um, it's a very reliable resource because it's updated almost every day with the top lines, like about like that the commentators get to say. Oh, and you can watch cool little clips <laughs> of videos of people scoring. And stuff okay, like that. your first word, your first idea for reliable 
means that it's updated regularly. What else does reliable mean when we're looking at resources? If, like, you commented on it, it wouldn't tell me, I mean, that's okay. kind of bad. true. It's true. So who who's the author? So who is the author? So that is important too. Is the author a scientist um, at a university or at a zoo, or is the um, author a fifth grade <coughs> student? Which still could be accurate. Actually, I'm going to train true and accurate. This stuff I'm putting on the board is probably stuff you should be putting on your notes. Yes, sir, do you want to add something to reliable? Um, if it's reliable, it means it was um, written or um, created by experts who know a lot on this subject. Created by experts. And I like the word created better than just written because um, that includes video and audio and photos by experts. So an expert could be a fifth grader. What it's like to take spelling tests in fifth grade could be yeah. a fifth grade thing. I wouldn't necessarily be an expert on it. I would be an expert on giving spelling tests. So you want to find out who, what the expert is. What if you get the reading and you don't do the test? Yeah. Okay, what about for reliable? Um, oh, that's another question. So reliable. Anything else that might be reliable? Um, well, it could be reliable if, of course, you wrote it, and you, like, know, like, like, or maybe, like, if you know, like, if you've been there before, and it tells true facts. Okay, so that, that would be, no. but that's not finding a resource. I'm going to show well, you, I'm going to show you a quick clip, video clip, of... Um, reliability and another word <coughs> called relevance. And we'll see if we can figure out the word relevance from the video. Um, and I'm trying to remember. Let's see. I think this is the one that I want to show you, but I have two here. This one because I want to show you the other one first. <coughs> I know I'm the tab queen, drives my family crazy, but I love them.
student will need to ensure that the information sources are reliable and relevant. There are six key questions that must be asked when deciding if a resource is suitable to be used in an assignment. Information quality varies according to the reliability of its source. Consider the publisher. A university press is more likely to publish scholarly information than a commercial publisher. Scholarly sources often have a process of peer review, also known as refereeing, where experts in the field judge that the information is reliable before it is published. You can usually check whether a journal is refereed by checking the information on the publisher's webpage. Academic books and journal articles should note the author's methods and assumptions as well as list the references used as supporting evidence. As a reader, you can check these references to ensure that the conclusions the author draws are reasonable. A reliable web page will also have a list of references, but if there are no references or links to other sources, then you can't be sure that the information is valid. In books and journal articles, it is usual that the academic qualifications of the author are listed, as well as the academic institution with which they are connected. The author may also have been mentioned by your lecturer or this other This was authors. kind of what Josie was On talking websites about. websites and blogs, anyone can claim to have qualifications. There is no simple way to check their expertise, and so there is no certainty that the information they give is reliable. Information from the internet may be published by companies, organizations, and government departments. Government websites have a system of checking information before it goes on the website. But be careful with information from private companies and organizations. If there is no author identified, then you should be wary. A reference list tells you what resources the author used to inform and support their claims. Check that the resources on the reference list are scholarly and that they have been used accurately and not been taken out of context. A web page with no reference list may say things that sound correct, but it is difficult to check and be certain. The date of publication can be important in certain fields of study, particularly where information is rapidly changing. Dates are usually clearly indicated on books and journal articles. Also remember that books, particularly textbooks, are sometimes updated with new editions. Sometimes websites do not indicate when they were last updated, and so you cannot be sure that the information is current. Consider the purpose of the information and the motivations of the author. Information can be presented in a way to persuade you of a particular opinion or to buy a commercial product or service. Publications from some organizations tend to reflect the views of their members and are less likely to be objective. So, consider the six aspects of evaluation. Reliability, validity, <coughs> authority, accuracy, timeliness, and point of view. Okay, on your notes, please. You already have reliable done, and reliable and reliability are the same things. Could you also add point of view, or things to watch for, and, it, and point of view, accuracy, authority, timeliness, and validity, and they're all spelled up there, so and I would suggest you spell them out in a horizontal line rather than vertical the way it is in this image. Oh, 
Um, no, underneath it, um, kind of like this, it's just other things you need to watch for <coughs> when you're evaluating your resources. So that when you look at a book, um, now a graphic novel can be accurate and have authority, but it also can be, um, and it also have not be accurate and not have authority. Um, Wikipedia can be accurate and have authority, but, but you have to look at the references and the author who wrote it. But many times it's not right because anybody can just go in and say, well, we can who ruin one, even though, like, okay. the cardinal thing. And that's the point of view piece. That's exactly it. The timeliness is how soon it's been updated. We already have accurate one. We have, we have that under reliable, but, yeah, just make sure you have it down. Okay. This are, do people have that written down? No. Yep. Okay. Does this make sense to you? Yep. So whether you're doing a book or a movie, yes. Yep. They all need to have... You don't... You need to focus on this one. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Everybody all set with this? Yes. Okay. Is there any more in the video? Yes, there is. Cool. Yeah. Be confident that your assignments are supported by quality information. Remember, always evaluate all the information you find uh -huh. before you rely on it. That was really good. I'm glad you liked that one. Okay. There. Um, and then there's a... Um, so that's for evaluating the resources. You need to really think about that as you're finding your resources. And your resources can be books, can be magazines, can be pictures, <coughs> can be, actually can be equipment if you're doing hockey. The hockey puck, the face mask, those, those, can, be, those can be resources for your research. If you were describing the safety features of the hockey mask. That, that would that be is part of that. Historical pieces. Oh, 2004. 2004. But it's only a year old, so it's, it's pretty. And some information is, oh, doesn't change, like the information of, some information doesn't change. Can you give me an example of something that doesn't change? Classes. What about? Um, what time a uh, random an author died? What time an author died? What year? The date of that? Is this stuff that does change or doesn't change? This stuff that doesn't change. Don't be cat's expression? Um, yeah, but, yeah, okay. Um, uh, Civil War. What about the Civil War? Some of our understanding of the Civil War will always do the same, but if researchers uncover new information, might that change our understanding? Yes. And he talked about journals or diaries that people who lived at the time of the Civil War kept. That's a perfect segue, a perfect lead-in or transition to our next topic today, which is the difference between primary and <coughs> secondary resources. We're going to watch another video about primary and secondary resources. And um, it will, um, does anybody have any clue about a primary and secondary resource? Yes, sir. Um, a primary, I think a primary resource is a resource, like, is the resource um, that somebody first made about something. So, like, the first website made about a certain topic. And the secondary resource is one that um, isn't visited as often and was um, made later. Okay, is this what you think, or is this what you have learned prior to? what I think. What do you think? Okay, so it's an opinion. What do you think? Um, I think that a primary and secondary resource would be like, for your, like you would have a primary and secondary resource. Okay. Is this a video that I have? Um, 
Not the primary mm -hmm. secondary resource okay. video. Um, Were you here when we wrote down those six things? Then you're yeah, because fine. I think like the primary one would be the one that you use a lot of Both of these predictions, these thinkings, are really good because it tells me that you are thinking. But I want you to watch this video and check to see if either of these predictions are correct or if your thinking about this is correct. The content of your research project will be made up of primary and secondary sources. Primary and secondary sources come in many different formats, and there are benefits for referencing those texts in your assignment. It can be difficult to figure out if a source is considered primary or secondary, but don't worry, because we'll explain the differences here so that you can decide which are best to use in your assignment. Primary sources are first-hand accounts of an event, topic, or historical time period. Anything that contains original information on a topic is considered a primary source. Examples of primary sources include things like letters or personal diaries or journals, original photographs, speeches, newspaper <coughs> reports, creative works like paintings, plays, and music, and research data or surveys. It's a good idea to use primary sources in research papers because it allows you to form your own argument to defend your thesis, since the information you're using is unfiltered by another person's point of view. You're able to critique an original work using your own ideas. Secondary sources interpret, critique, or analyze primary sources. It is information that is created or published from primary sources. Examples of secondary sources include things like textbooks, essays or reviews, encyclopedias, newspaper articles that analyze or discuss events and ideas, and criticisms and commentaries. It's a good idea to use secondary sources in research papers because you can learn about new perspectives that you may not have even considered and they can also strengthen your own argument in the assignment. For example, if you're writing a history paper about how the diversity of a city shifted during a certain time period, you could use data from the U.S. Census Bureau to compare populations across the decades. This type of information would be considered a primary source, as it's data that's simply been collected and compiled. There is no analysis. That's what you'll be doing in the paper. For the same topic, you could also use an article from a newspaper that reviews the data and draws conclusions or analysis from it, such as other ways in which the population might change or grow over time. Some sources, like scholarly journals and newspapers, can serve as both a primary and a secondary source, depending on which article you're reading. Articles that include things like eyewitness accounts or interviews and are published close to the time of the event you're researching would be a primary source. Articles that are published after the fact and include analysis or critiques are secondary sources. Primary and secondary sources can both strengthen and improve your research immensely by providing you with information to create an argument and defend your thesis statement. Now that you know how to differentiate between them, try using them in your own assignment. Okay, so what I'd like to... That's okay. Can you get the lights, please? Okay, so who can tell me what a primary resource is? Primary resource. Yes, ma'am. Um, a primary resource is a um, resource from around that time that doesn't include an opinion. <coughs> Ooh. Information. Anybody want to add anything to that? Information. From a time period <coughs> Uh, that does that doesn't have a pin that has no opinion. Could it have an opinion if it was my diary? 
Yeah. I think that being 13 is just miserable. So it could have an opinion. But if it's information, it doesn't have any analysis. It's just from a perspective. So instead of no opinion, that information from a, that's just pure information. It's pure information. It's the actual thing. And secondary? Come on. Yes. I just think we're primary. That's okay. Leave it. Leave it. I think we're primary. Okay. Um, primary meat source is um, a source that um, has information or photos or pictures or something like that that were, um, that, um, were created using a uh, uh, Diaries or writings from somebody or something around that time, and um, from uh, co like core information and not um, stuff that um, you heard of or that you saw some on like TV. Okay. Some TV things can be true. Yeah. And some TV things can be primary resources. The things, the photos, the movies, the water bottle, the ancient vase from Greece are called artifacts. The things are called artifacts. So it's pure information or artifacts and secondary is information about the primary resource. So if I discovered if this because I was at an archaeological dig or I went to a museum and I thought, ooh, it's cylindrical. It's cool to the touch. I wonder what it was used for. Who designed it? Oh, they showed an elegant design of function and form. <laughs> a secondary information would be me writing. The, the camelback water bottle appears to be cylindrical in shape and designed for ease of use. That would be a secondary source. So put those <laughs> on your notes. Um, I don't have enough yep, and staple it in or Xerox it and just keep it all together. Any other questions today? Cool. <laughs>